Hello friends, my name is Nizamuddin Ahmed Siddiqui and I am an assistant professor of law at West Bengal National University of Juridical Sciences, Kolkata. I will be taking this unit on fundamental rights under the Indian constitution. On behalf of the content writer, Dr. K. Sita Manikayam, assistant professor, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar Law College, Andhra University. This unit will aim to fulfill certain learning objectives which include number one, understanding the birth of the fundamental rights, number two, knowing how the constitutional remedies work for the aggrieved alongside the flourishing rights and duties of the citizens and number three, learning how the rights can be made impartial without any discrimination on race, sex and religion. With these learning objectives in mind, friends, let us begin this unit on fundamental rights under the Indian constitution. The constitution of India guarantees definite fundamental rights both to the citizens and non-citizens in the territory of India. Part 3, Articles 12 to 35 contains an extensive list of fundamental rights. They are called fundamental because they are vital to the development of human individually as well as his existence in a society. Chapter 3 has also been described as the Magna Carta of the Indian Constitution. Part 3 of the Constitution confers the whole of traditional civil and political rights enumerated within the Universal Declaration of Human Rights 1948. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar described them as the national element of the Constitution. Friends, fundamental rights are also deemed necessary to defend the rights and liberties of the people against the infringement of the supremacy delegated via them to their government. These fundamental rights stand for the basic values cherished by the people of India since the Vedic times. They are intended to defend the dignity of the entity and make conditions in which all human beings can bring their personality to the fullest. These rights merge a model of assurance on the fundamental structure of human rights and inflict negative obligations on the state not to intrude on individual liberty in its different dimensions. These constitutional rights are regarded as fundamental because they are most vital to the accomplishment by the individual of his full intellectual, moral and spiritual standing. The aim of insertion of these entitlements in the constitution is to set up a government of law and not of man. Friends, let us now briefly look at the history of fundamental rights and also understand how they have become a very important part of the Indian constitution. The enclosure of a set of fundamental rights has its origin in the forces to operate in the national effort all through the British rule. Mrs. Annie Besant described the Constitution of India Bill as a Home Rule Bill. This bill envisaged for India's constitution guaranteeing to all of her citizens freedom of expression, purity of one's house the right to property, superiority before the law and regarding the public agencies right to current claims, petitions, complaints and the right to personal liberty. In 1928, the Nehru Commission composed of the legislative body of Indian political parties anticipated constitutional reforms for India. That after, that after calling for dominion position for India 
and elections in universal suffrage would guarantee rights deemed primary illustration for religious and racial minorities and bound the powers of the regime. In 1931, the Indian National Congress adopted resolutions committing itself to the defense of these civil rights as well as socio-economic rights such as the minimum wage and the elimination of untouchability and serfdom. A prominent development all through that phase having noteworthy consequence on the Indian constitution took place on 10th of December 1948 while the United Nations General Assembly adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and called upon all the constituent states to approve these rights in their relevant constitutions. The fundamental rights were incorporated in the first draft constitution of February 1948, the second draft of the constitution of 17th October 1948 and the final third draft of the constitution of 26th November 1949 organized by the drafting committee. The fundamental rights as included in the Indian constitution are divided into six kinds of fundamental rights. They are and the list is the right to equality articles 14 to 18, right to freedom articles 19 to 22, right against exploitation article 23 and 24, right to freedom of religion articles 25 and 28, cultural and educational rights article 29 to 30, right to constitutional remedies article 32 to 35. Friends, let us now discuss these fundamental rights one by one starting with right to equality under article 14 to 18. Article 14 states that the state shall not deny to any person equality before the law or the equal protection of the law within the country of India. The two phrases number one equality before the law and number two equal protection of the law do not signify accurately the similar object. The previous is negative in content implying lack of unique privilege in support of any division of the people or any individual. Equal protection of the law is however a positive statement. It implies fairness of conduct in a like circumstance. And fairness before the law implies that everyone is equal in the eye of law. Each one will be tried by the same law and will be known the equal punishment for similar crimes. The expression equal protection of the laws means like should be treated alike. So as no one be supposed to be favored and no one should be discriminated. Friends, this allows the legislature to categorize persons intended, for instance, for taxes. The categorization should be rational. Thus, the state might let off charities and trusts from taxation, may impose diverse rules of income tax on different trades or else professions, and be able to tax real and private property in unusual ways. Equal fortification thus ensures equal conductors in equal circumstances and contrary conduct in differing states of affairs. Article 15 gives that the state shall not distinguish in opposition to any citizen on grounds only of religion, race, caste, sex, place of birth or any of them. This guarantee under Article 15 is accessible to citizens basically and not to every person whether citizen or non-citizen. This article prohibits the citizens as well as the states from creating hindrances as to access to shops, 
hotels etc and all places of public entertainment of public resort well tanks roads etc according to article 15 the state authorizes to create outstanding provisions for the security of women and children and enable to provide unique provisions for the protecting of the interests of the backward classes article 16 guarantees equal opportunity in matters of public employment there shall be justice for all citizens in matters concerning employment or appointment to any administrative center under the state it also forbids bias on reason only of religion race caste sex descent and place of birth or which are whichever of them in matter of open employment here are a few exceptions to the exclusion of inequity under article 16 the state could set aside some actions for backward classes if not effectively represented in the state services offices in the religious institution can be kept for the followers of the religion concerned similarly vacancies in the state services can be made to reserve for the scheduled castes and tribes article 17 of the constitution says untouchability is abolished and its practice in any form it is therefore forbidden the enforcement of every disability arising out of untouchability is to be an offense in accordance with law article 18 forbids titles except military or academic distinctions title from foreign government such as knighthood is prohibited however honors conferred by the government of india such as bharat ratna or padma shri etc are not titles but only credit of praiseworthy services the president is empowered to suspend to suspend the right for the duration of a national emergency under article 352 of the constitution let us now understand right to freedom under article 19 to 22 the rights mostly are significant fundamental rights defined by the constitution of india it is the dominance of these freedoms that build a significant democracy but these rights are subject to a few, few rational restrictions article 19 of the constitution provides six freedoms namely number 1 right to freedom of speech and expression number 2 right to assemble peacefully and without arms number 3 right to form associations or unions number 4 right to move freely throughout the territory of india number 5 right to reside and settle in any part of the territory of india and number 6 right to practice any profession or to carry on any occupation trade or business it is to be noted that prior to 1977 right to property was a fundamental right as guaranteed by article 191f and article 31 of the constitution but in the year 1977 the 44th amendment abolished the right to property as a fundamental right article 20 provides a protection in respect of conviction for offenses The article provides the following three safeguards to the persons accused of crime. These safeguards are number one, protection from ex, ex post facto law, meaning thereby that no person shall be convicted of any offence except for the violation of law in force at the time of the commission of the act charged as an offence. Number two. protection from double jeopardy meaning that no person shall be prosecuted and punished for the same offense more than once and number 3 prohibition against self incrimination meaning 
that no person accused of any offence shall be compelled to be a witness against himself. Article 21 of the constitution says that no person shall be deprived of his life or personal liberty except according to procedure established by law. This right guaranteed in article 21 is available to citizens as well as non-citizens. The expression personal liberty in article 21 is of widest, widest amplitude and it covers a variety of rights. Article 22 provides against arbitrary arrest and detention. This right guaranteed in article 21 is available to citizens as well as non-citizens. The expression personal liberty in article 21 is of widest amplitude and it covers a variety of rights. Article 22 provides against arbitrary arrest and detention. It deals with two matters. First, the person who is arrested under the ordinary law of crime and second, persons who are obtained under the law of preventive detention. Let us now understand the rights against exploitation enshrined in article 23 and 24. Article 23 declares slave trade, prostitution and human trafficking a punishable offence. However, an exception in the form of employment without payment for compulsory services for public purposes is evident. Essential military enlistment is enclosed by this provision. Article 24 of the Indian Constitution prohibits employment of children before the age, below the age of 14 years in dangerous jobs like factories and mines. Child labor is well thought out as a gross violation of the strength and provisions of the Constitution. And therefore, we need to emphasize on it. The right to freedom of religion is well described in the articles 25 to 28 of the Indian Constitution. Article 25 provides the freedom of conscience and free profession, practice and propagation of religion. According to this right, every person is uniformly permitted to enjoy the freedom of conscience and the right to acknowledge practice and spread the religion. However, this right is questioned to contain certain restrictions to sustain public law, order, morality and peace in the country. Article 26 provides freedom to run religious affairs. According to the constitution, freedom to run religious association consists of the freedom to establish and maintain charitable institutions, whichever to manage its own affairs within the matters of religion or to obtain or own movable and immovable property and to take care of such property without infringing the law. This right does not pertain to an individual. Article 27 says no person shall be compelled to pay any tax for the promotion or maintenance of any religion. According to this object of Indian constitution, no person shall be obligated to pay any taxes, the proceeds of which are particularly appropriate in reimbursement of expenses intended for the expansion or protection of any religion or religious denomination. Article 28 provides the freedom as to attendance at religious teaching or religious worship in assuring educational institutions. According to this fundamental right, no religious lesson shall be offered at any educational institution completely maintained out of state funds. This article forbids religious instruction altogether in state funded educational institutions and educational institutions receiving assistance 
by the state. Articles 29 to 30 of the Indian constitution efficiently intend to eradicate this problem by making a provision in the article known as right to cultural and educational rights of minority groups. Article 29 provides the right to protection of interests. This article ensures equivalence to all the citizens of India with respect to freedom pertaining to conserving their traditions, language and script and no minority group can be induced to deny can be induced to be denied admission into any educational system or organization of their choice and any funds from the state merely based on caste or language and also religion. Article 30 provides the right to establish educational institutions. This article states that religious and language minorities will have the right to administer and establish their own educational institutions. The constitution of India safeguards the linguistic and cultural liberty of minorities. These articles and rights in the constitution are to provide in favor of and protect these minority groups by providing impartially the opportunity and freedom to hold onto individual language, caste, culture and education. The right to constitutional remedy under article 32 was created as one of the main fundamental rights because the constitution acknowledged the need to protect the rights of the citizens. In case of any of the fundamental rights being depressed or denied in the inhabitant of the country, the individual or the party has the right to forward their case in a court. In this case, the court has the flexibility to allow writs to the society in the variety of forms as such. The Indian citizens can stand and fight in support of their fundamental rights if these rights are breached. The remedies can be available through the writs. These writs are number one, the writ of habeas corpus, number two, the writ of mandamus, number three, the writ of prohibition, number four, the writ of certiorari, and number five, writ of quo warranto. Friends, we are now moving towards the conclusion of this unit. And therefore, we can say that fundamental rights were incorporated in the constitution because they were considered crucial for the improvement of the personality of every individual. And to conserve human dignity, the writers of the constitution regarded democracy of no purpose if civil liberties like freedom of speech and religion were not predictable and protected by the state. Indian courts have interpreted these civil rights not only in a negative dimension, but also in a positive dimension. With this, friends, we have come to an end of this lecture. I thank you all for listening to the lecture with patience. Thank you.